All right, hello, welcome back to a software engineer plays where we are back in my favorite spreadsheet application, Microsoft Excel, uh, teaching a little bit more uh, Visual Basic for applications as we continue implementing our tic-tac-toe board. So last time we got the board set up here, your typical three by three grid in Excel. And we also got our basic code set up here. Um, we're going to have the game handler, which is going to be our main game loop, where we'll loop through. And we have an init function, which sets up the um, <laughs> sets up the player names and uh, who is going to be playing first. And currently, that's hard coded to be player number one. But eventually, we might uh, build a coin toss or some kind of randomness into it uh, to say player two will go first, things like that. So what we want to do uh, this time around is, uh, first of all, we'll need to write a function to print out the board to our um, little grid here. And then we'll want to start actually taking input from the users as to which cell they want to play in and um, we'll go from there. So let's start writing a function to print the board variable which is a two-dimensional array here um, and we will go from there. So I'm just gonna fix some spacing here and a couple of housekeeping items I'm gonna set this subroutine to be private so that we can't accidentally call it from another um, another module or from the worksheet itself um, just because we don't want to accidentally call that um, while the game is being played because it would mess up the state of the variables but now let's go ahead and create a subroutine to print the board it's always a good idea to have descriptive names for your subroutines and functions so that you can tell what they are going to be doing. So we're going to call this one print board. And since we're going to be working mainly with the tic-tac-toe sheet, we are going to use one of the nice constructs in VBA called the with statement. So with, and then uh, since we're working in this specific workbook, we're going to use the keyword this workbook. We'll put a period and you'll see that we pull up all of the different things we can access um, on the this workbook object and we want to access the a worksheet um, so worksheets is there if you start typing uh, it will select it for you you can hit tab to auto complete it and then you can either access the worksheet by um, index in this case it would be sheet uh, two, or by the name of the sheet, or I think you can come in here and just type in sheet three like that, because that is the object there itself. See sheet three with the name tic tac toe. But since it's easier for us to read the name of the workbook like that, we'll just go with that. And it's always important to end your with statement with the end with so that we know where we're, uh, so that the compiler knows where to end uh, the with statement. Anyway, if we go ahead and open up our workbook, we're gonna move this over to the right side here. So uh, by nature of the, um, the way the board is going, there are a couple ways we could do this. Um, probably the most quote unquote a secure way to do it so that people can't cheat while the game is being played is um, just directly writing from the variable board to the sheet here and then the board will handle all of the logic and it'll never actually read from the sheet another way i thought that might make it easier um, for the code um, would be to maintain a separate section of the workbook like over here, for example, if we put uh, all zeros here and then just used formulas here using just the equal sign. 
And the reason this is easier is that since I have a two-dimensional array here, I could just set this section of the workbook to be equal to board in one uh, one line of code instead of the nine different statements I'm going to have to write to get this section here. Um, but the disadvantage of doing it this way is that a player could easily come in here and just type in any number and it would be confusing to the players. It's not actually going to affect the game logic because the board is handled in memory behind the scenes, but I kind of prefer the cleaner approach of not having a bunch of extra numbers on the screen. It does make my print board function a little bit more tricky, but at the end of the day, it's you know nine lines of code instead of one, and I can type relatively quickly. So uh, we will say dot cells, uh, and cells um, takes two parameters, the row and then the column. So we're going to start with cell B2 here, which is row two, column two. And that's going to equal um, board at one, one. And we'll go ahead and separate all of this out into three groups of three. So the first row or the first basically going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Make all of these twos and make all of these threes. Now we need to change this part here. So we're still going to be in uh, row two. So this part is going to need to change. So that's going to go to a four and that's going to go to a six. And we're going to have two, four, six, two, four, and six. This is going to go to four, 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 six, six, six. So that, in its most basic sense, is just printing out the values stored in board um, to the each cell. Now, this is going to have a little bit of overhead in it, and if I was writing this to be more performance uh, focused, it would be a lot better to um, write all of the values of the cells. For example, if I use the range and I say dot cells, we'll use cells 1, 8. So row 1, 8, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That'll start there. And we'll go to uh, cells 3, 8 plus 3 is 11. Nope, we need to go to 10. Just kidding. So what this will do, so dot range um, refers to any group of cells from a single cell to um, a larger number of cells on the worksheet. And then you can either pass it uh, references to individual cells, or you can refer to it like um, like you would in a formula. So I could say from H1 to uh, J3. I don't like to use these references like this because it's a lot easier for a computer to deal with numbers, uh, especially if you're trying to dynamically create a worksheet. Uh, it's easier to add one to a number instead of trying to figure out what H plus one is. Um, so you'll see um, the board, currently we're not initializing the board, so it's going to be completely empty. So if I call the print board function, we're going to run into issues. Let's just step through that. So if we open up here and we go into the board, you'll see we have initialized everything with zeros. So if I print the board, what's going to happen is we get zeros across the board, which isn't great from a usability standpoint. But we'll also see here one line of code, put all the zeros in that grid there. So really what we want to do, um, if it's a zero, that means the square has not been played yet. So what we want to do is um, 
basically we'll put a, a try state statement in here, which is the IIF function. So if board at one one equals zero, then put nothing, which VBA has a um, construct called VB null string, which is basically just an empty string, but it takes up less memory than the actual empty string character there. So if it's zero, we'll put null, otherwise we'll put board at one one. And yes, this is going to increase the um, execution time even more just because now it has to evaluate an if statement every time, which, you know, again, it's not great, but for ease of seeing how everything works, um, we're just going to go with this way first. There are other ways we could do it. Probably the easiest way to do it, honestly. Um, I'll do it this way just to show you how it's all working. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll use a construct called a variant in VBA, which lets us have multiple or different variable types in an array. Um, anyway. I'm going to actually skip the init phase because I don't want to type in names every time. I'm going to come in here. So because board at 1, 1 is 0, it's going to um, check the condition here. You'll see it's equating to true there. So that means it's going to paste an empty string, which you can see is an empty string instead of board at 1, 1. So if we go through this, our board empties out. But our board still holds all zeros in memory. So that's kind of... It's analogous to writing this. Um, but it's one line instead of a bunch of lines, and it's cleaner to look at. But what I really want to do to make this much easier and get rid of all the if statements is instead of declaring the board as an integer type, I'm going to declare it as a variant. And what that will mean is that when it gets initialized, these will all be empty. So being empty is also the same as being, you guessed it, the empty string. So if I come down here and get rid of all of this extra stuff and click through all of the irritating messages, because the compiler really likes to hold your hand. OK, so now because our variable is empty, you'll see it's printing nothing out because it's empty. Well, it's just filling it with empty. And printing the board there, still empty. So this is a lot cleaner than having all those inline if statements. Good. So that'll be our print board function. And what we will do now is work on actually taking player input. OK, so player input. Basically, uh, we want to determine whose player it is. And to do that, we will, um, we've got current player defined as a, a variable for the module. You see, it's outside the scope of an individual function. And that means that it will be accessible from any sub or function within this module because it's private. That means we don't have to worry about passing it as a parameter. Um, more on that later. But basically, uh, I can just write a function called take turn. All right, so in the take turn function, we're going to make it a private sub. And I'm using the word sub and function um, interchangeably because in other programming languages, uh, everything is a function. There's no real differentiation between a subroutine and a function. There is a differentiation in VBA. Um, a subroutine returns no values, whereas a function does return values. Um, in other programming languages, you get the idea of a void return type, which just means it returns nothing. But for VBA, a void return type is a subroutine. So here we go. 
So we know who the current player is because it gets set in the init function. Um, so we will actually need to enable the init function here. Um, I don't care about the names though, so I'm going to comment those out just so that I don't have to type it every time. Okay, so we will ask the user for which cell they want to um, play in, and we will create a temporary variable for that. So we will call it um, play space as string. So we're going to use this as a string. And the reason for that is we're going to ask the user to input row and column at the same time. Um, so play space will equal an input box. Please enter the row and column you would like to play in, separated by a com comma. It doesn't need to be comma separated, but in this way we'll get to um, pretty easily get the numbers out. So we're going to create more temporary variables now called um, row and column. So um, basically, we will now um, parse the input. So we'll parse the string that was input uh, into the play space variable. And to do that, we're going to use a function called split. So um, to show how that works, I'm going to create another variable called um, parsed input parsed input is going to equal play space, but we're going to split the play space with the comma character. So this is going to let us do all kinds of input checking to make sure that the uh, player has input a valid um, input. <laughs> yeah, input a valid input. Uh, basically, so they don't try to you know, put numbers that are too big or text or anything like that. Um, so what we will do, um, first of all, we'll correct this little error here. And then we uh, will say, there are a couple things we need to check. So we'll check that input is numeric first. And check that there's, well, really we should check that input contains two parts. So if the upper bound, u bound function gets the upper bound of an array, so what the split function does is it takes a string and will split it into an array of strings every time it finds a uh, the character that you told it to split on. So basically, if I have, hello, how are you? That would then get split into, hello, and how are you? Make sense? I hope so. We'll see it happen in real time here when we start getting input. But first, we need to make sure that the u bound of the split function is uh, 1. If u bound doesn't equal 1, that means there's either too few inputs or too many inputs. Um, the reason we say 1 is because the split function always is 0 index. And this will be invalid input. And we will have to write some code to handle invalid input and let them try again. So now we will move on. Now that we know that we've got at least two parts, we will say if 
uh, we'll use the is numeric uh, parsed input at zero. And is numeric parsed input at one. Then, and really, what we want to do here, um, I'm just going to nest a bunch of. So what I did, I switched the not equal to equal, so that we can have all of our error checking nested here. Otherwise. That means it's going to be invalid input. So if it gets to this point, it'll be um, invalid. If it fails this, it'll be invalid, basically. All right. So the, no the last thing to check is that the numbers are between 1 and 3. And so. Um, there are other things we could check, like whether or not it's a whole number. Uh, if people are trying to put in decimal places, then uh, I don't know why you'd try and play in the three and a half to the square, but we could check for that. I'm not going to right now, but uh, if, if people were to put in decimals, it would mess things up. Uh, we could very easily fix that by either rounding or rounding up or rounding down the number, um, and we might do that. Just so if people try to be sneaky and break our code, uh, we've accounted for it. But let's get the input. Uh, we're going to set row equal to parse input at zero and call equal to parse input at one, and just because it seems like the right thing to do, I'm gonna go ahead and round them up. So we will round to zero places so that we are catching anybody trying to get sneaky. Other languages, because we declared them as integers, actually, because we declared them as integers, it would probably throw an error if we didn't round them. Um, so this might be a good thing for us to do anyway. If you try and put something with a decimal place into an integer variable type, it complains because it doesn't know how to handle that. So let's go with that. We'll round them. And just as an extra layer of safety, we will also make sure that it's treating them as integers using the C int function, which is going to take whatever this is and force it into an integer type. And really, we don't need, if we took out the round at this point, it would um, round down because, for example, if you have 3.8, it's going to be equal to 3.8. If I take that and try and cram it into an integer, uh, I need a question mark. It's, oh, it rounds up. Okay, well, good to know. Uh, so the C int formula's got some rounding built in. Um, usually, if you try and cast a, uh, a double or a single precision floating point number in any other language <laughs> to, a, um, to an integer, it just knocks all the decimals off. But in this case, for whatever reason, it does not do that. If we were to do something called integer division, which is the backslash, you also get a rounded up value of four. Integer division is essentially um, the, it's a division problem like when you did them in grade school and you had the divisor and then the uh, remainder. Um, this would be the divisor, although it's really strange that it's coming up with a 4 in this case because 1 goes into 3.8 three times with a remainder of 0.8. So I'm not really sure what VBA is doing here. We're just going to go ahead and uh, round everything so that we know exactly what's going on. Now we can double check our, <laughs> our numbers. Uh, so if uh, row is greater than 3 or 
row is less than one, then. And really, we should combine these two statements. So if row is uh, outside the numbers and column is outside the numbers, or actually, or column is outside the numbers, sorry. So if either of these fail, and I'm just putting them in parentheses to make it clearer to us what's going on, then we have invalid input, else we have valid input. OK, so. And let's go ahead and flip this around so that it's valid again. If it's less than or equal to 3 and greater than or equal to 1. And so this is demonstrating something that we call um, De Morgan's Law in Boolean logic in general. If you negate a combined statement, so um, in this case we had row greater than three or row less than one, when you negate that whole statement and apply the negation inside, you flip the signs, but you also flip the or to an and. So um, kind of an interesting thing. So what this is saying is if this if the row is a valid input, if it's less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to one, and the column is also less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to one, then we have valid input. And we can say that board at row column is equal then to current player. Okay, however, the more eagle-eyed viewers might notice that there's another problem here, and that is that this would currently allow any player to overwrite a previous player's turn, which is not allowed in tic-tac-toe. So, we need to add an additional check, and that is if board if is empty, board at row column, then we can do it. Otherwise, we have invalid input. And what we're going to do to handle the invalid input is we're going to put an exit sub right here. So if we do have valid input, then we're going to exit out of the sub. Otherwise, once we get down here, we know invalid input has occurred. So what we're actually going to do is just put this in a loop. All right. So, and this could get dangerous because obviously using while true is a potentially infinite loop, but hopefully, let's double check here. Okay, so I'm gonna put a breakpoint in and we're gonna start playing. So while true, play space, enter the row and column you would like to play in separated by a comma. So I would like to play in comma F5. And what's gonna happen, we'll parse the input and you'll see parsed input f and 5, so 0 and 1. Now parsed input at 0 is not numeric, so we should skip over this. And what we can do is put a message in here. And really, we want to make it a little bit more um, clear instead of just having one general message box. Generally, it's a good idea to be clear as to what error has taken place. So how about we will say this space has already been played in. And then this is out of bounds. You can kind of see where we're going with this. Non-numeric input detected. 
Okay. And otherwise, the last statement we have is not, well, basically invalid input. Too few or too many inputs detected. Okay, go ahead and make the spacing a little bit nicer and consistent. So now, enter the row. Let's try that F5 again. Okay, step on through. So because it's non-numeric, we're gonna put our non-numeric thing out and we're gonna keep looping. Okay, so let's just put in three. So parsed input now, the U bound you'll see will be zero. So too few or too many inputs, very good. Go again, I'll put in three, maybe not those three numbers. <laughs> Uh, too many, okay. So now we'll put in a four and a three. So we have the right number of inputs, but four is gonna be bigger than the three, so the space is out of bounds. And now finally, finally, well, just for fun, let's put in 3.5. Because it rounds, it's gonna be out of bounds. And now we'll put in three, three. Yay! <laughs> so you see there, our print board function is also working. One thing to note is that it is not playing um, X's or O's. It's just putting ones and zeros, which eh, we can fix pretty easily. Uh, so let's do that now. But first, um, let's go ahead and see if our same space code is working. And it is. So. We've now got a pretty well fleshed out taking turn code. Why didn't that go? That should have gone. In the init, let's go ahead and add a call to print board. Um, and we want to set board. Uh, Basically, we want to reset the board every time the game starts, because I think what happened there is we had some values left over in memory. So, uh, yeah, it's already defined. Get rid of the numbers up here to clear that error. Now everything will be happy. So we'll go 1-1. One, one. Good. Because the game over is true, <laughs> we're ending after one turn. Uh, but you'll see the board now clears every time the game is started, which is good. If I were to skip over that game over, then it should be player two taking the turn here. And if I go in one, one, it's already been played in. So I'll go in two, two instead, and the two appears there. Very good. So now we have our loop defined um, to get player input and it's pretty well um, pretty well defended against invalid inputs so I am happy with calling the video here in the next video what we will do is instead of just setting game over to true at the end we will write a function to check the state of the board after each turn and determine if a player has won or if um, it's a tie so uh, for now, I will say thank you very much for watching. This has been a Software Engineer Plays. Uh, if you did enjoy the content, if you're learning about VBA, um, that's great. Um, please drop a like, subscribe, comment down below, share the video, whatever you want to do. Uh, all of it helps us out and is greatly appreciated. Um, but I hope you have a wonderful day and go out there and solve some problems and create some spreadsheets. All right, thanks, bye.